about to go into one of my favorite antique stores and I wanted to take you along with me on this little adventure. I haven't been in a couple of weeks so we will see what is in there but this is my first video and I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Vivi and I love antiquing and thrifting and just wanted to take you along with me on these little adventures. I also have an Instagram. It is called Vives Vintage Finds and I post a lot of videos on there as well and I also sell some of the things I find on these little adventures. If you see anything you like let me know and I can post them and I have some things for sale on there already. But I just am excited to start this little experiment, this little journey and I will try to post as much as possible and take you to some of my favorite places around Vermont. Come with me and and I will do a little haul afterwards as well. Okay, see you in there. I thought this pocket change dish was really fun. I also saw these blankets, but they didn't really speak to me today. Since I've started vintage shopping, I have also developed an addiction for glassware, so I had to resist getting these. Like I said, I have a problem with glassware, so I immediately went towards these, but I had to resist, so I put them back. <laughs> I also saw this really pretty beaded purse, but did not get it this time. Surprisingly, I don't get many baskets. I thought this one was really pretty and unique. Similarly to glassware, I have a problem with mirrors, <laughs> but I left this one behind. Another thing I always gravitate towards in vintage stores are candlestick holders. When I first started out, I got a lot of them, so I don't get them as much anymore. I don't have any silver ones, so these were definitely pretty. I'm looking for something that makes me even more excited if I'm going to get another candlestick. I also love vintage plates because they have many purposes for me. I use them to decorate my apartment as well as eat on them. I have a lot right now so I left this one behind. Something else I like to get at vintage stores are ornaments and other Christmas decorations because they add a great touch. This booth is usually really well curated and I always love seeing what this person has in stock today. They seem to have really cute little Christmas items. I don't really know what this is, but it's really cute. Uh, sorry I'm saying cute so much, <laughs> but this pillow is adorable. Another word for cute and can't go wrong with a goose. This booth also has really cute items. Oh, look at this little guy. I think he was a piggy bank. Yeah, piggy bank. And I love things that have old cars because my granddad loved old cars. I left this little guy behind because there was a logo on top for like some bank, I think. And also mini items I am always gravitating to, like this little mini jug, but it was $12, so I said no. I love crystal and glass and so I use these kind of trays on my bedside table to hold my little knickknacks and they're usually really pretty and a great size and add a little bit of character to your room. This little tray was pretty, it was shaped like a leaf. Anything copper I always have to touch. <laughs> Also, mini frames are a great addition to gallery walls. This is an old photograph. It was a little beaten up, so I left it behind. 
This little silhouette also caught my eye because it was small. It was also a little bit expensive. I love brass candlesticks. I have a lot of them, but they make your apartment have that little vintage touch and you can style them so many different ways. So if you're getting into vintage, having a lot of brass candlesticks is a great start. I don't look for bags very often. Occasionally I find a really good one. This one was Michael Kors and it was in really great condition. I couldn't really see myself using it. It also was only like $28, but it was a really great find. Like I said before, I love copper, so I always love finding stuff like this and I have a lot of them hanging in my kitchen. This place also has really good leather bags. I've never gotten one from here, but they always seem to be from this one brand. I usually find some good things in this little booth. It's not very big, but they usually have some great finds. I see there's some uh, residual Christmas items, so they are usually discounted as well, so it's also a great time to shop for Christmas stuff after Christmas is over. I also like this booth because they usually have really pretty old books, which I always look for because I decorate my apartment's bookshelves with them, and I found some good ones here. They also have more candlesticks, but they're a little on the pricier side. I'm also a sucker for a good teapot, especially ones like this that are really small and unique. I also gravitate towards brass a lot. so. I'm like a magnet towards brass, but this one's really pretty and has a wood handle and really pretty detailing, so I definitely took this little guy home. Also whenever I see a box that says frames, I have to look through it no matter what because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, there were a couple frames in this box, but they were not the best quality. They were kind of falling apart or they were chipped. So I passed on these. Part of the reason I love vintage shopping is because it's like I spy and I love the hunt and so I love going to new stores and kind of looking through all the nooks and crannies of each store to try to find um, a gem. So it's just part of the journey and why I want to take you guys along with me. I usually don't find two boxes of frames, so when I saw this one, I about had a heart attack. I saw these and I saw gold and I knew I was going to find a good one. These first few were a little too skinny or chipped for my liking, but this one is the one that caught my eye immediately and it is gorgeous. This is the best frame I have found in a long time and it is barely chipped at all. Another thing I like getting at vintage and antique stores are candlesticks. I've gotten this a lot, especially around the holidays, and this is a really pretty cake stand, but I have so many, so I left that one. Then I spotted this little gem in the corner. I don't have any space for her, but she is really pretty and solid brass. It was hard to leave her, but she's big and heavy.
Another thing I almost got but didn't end up getting were these beautiful prints of France. There were five of them. You could get five of them for $100 or you could get them separately for $30. But I just don't have any wall space for them, but they were really, really pretty. And it was hard to leave them behind. Okay, I am back from my little adventure. Super fun. They had some leftover Christmas stuff and then they also had some new items. I come here quite a bit so I kind of can tell when something's new and just put in or it's been there for a while. Like there's some things I like always gravitate to that have been there for like months and I'm like oh, I want to buy it but I'm like I don't I'm running out of room for stuff in my apartment. Like I have a whole other extra like guest room that I put most of my vintage stuff in. I am just starting to like sell things. So hopefully my little collection will go down so I can get more stuff. But I wanted to show you, I got two things. First thing is I always gravitate towards teapots. I got this super cute brass teapot and I thought it was like really good size for keeping on your stove or something as decoration so it's super detailed and unique there's like a twist here and then the handle is like a wood carved handle and it was like $15 ish so that's pretty good and I can sell this if you guys want I will put it on my Instagram sometime soon I need to like go through my collection see what I have <laughs> what I can sell um, maybe that'll be another video so got this little dude super cute and then I almost had a heart attack <laughs> when I saw this next thing because I was like you'll get to know me but I love frames and I love vintage frames especially gold vintage frames and I have realized here in Vermont they are slim to none like a lot of them are skinny so like little thin ones so finding like a fat one like vintage is difficult so I get most of mine on Etsy and actually a lot of them are newer made to look like vintage because I just cannot only source vintage ones of all of the gallery walls I have but I found this guy. He needs a little work that I can do. Oh, look at her. She is stunning and like four by six, which is I've realized is kind of a harder size to find in old frames. A lot of them are like really obscure random measurements. <laughs> you kind of have to get like a custom print to put in it. But four by six is like the most common frame size. So I'm like, what? She has amazing detail on the edges here. Great color, no chips or anything. And it was only like, <laughs> $12. And I was like, what? Excuse me. So this one might be mine. I might not sell this one because I never find these, but I'm always on the hunt for good frames because gallery walls are like super easy to do. And I have say three at least in my little apartment. So definitely a fun find for sure. So not a huge haul, but some great stuff. This has been my first video. I'm so excited. I hope you enjoy this video. Comment on any other videos that you would like me to do. I'll probably do either like an apartment tour and show you all the vintage stuff like that I've styled in it or I can do going through the vintage stuff I have found that is in my collection that I can sell. If you want to see some of my other videos that I've done on Instagram and TikTok, I have both of them. Instagram and TikTok are both Veeves Vintage Finds. Um, I will comment those down below. Head on over there and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye!